What's that on the shirt? Time's up. And Andy responded and said, let's fight. Yeah. And then Deontay did a video. Hey, uh, we gave you an offer. Yeah. And Andy's dad, Andy Sr., just did a video that, or uh, interview, that he said you guys wanted a 70-30 split. Mm-hmm. Can you comment on that? I can't comment on the exact numbers, but what I do know and what I will say is Wilder against uh, uh, Andy, to me, it's not. It should be 50-50. Not, it should be 50-50. I mean, people come in there to see, actually, can Deontay decapitate him, how he's done so many others. That right there sells like itself. find a way to make it happen? Yeah, me too, man. But then even if they don't, we got big things lined, lined up. Um, but the offer was sent. The offer was sent. Um, Andy replied in his own way. But the way we like people to reply is say, not just saying, let's do it. Sign a contract. <laughs> Okay, according to Malik Scott, that was Ellie Setback reporting, <laughs> and Malik Scott gives some insight on the negotiations and what they offered versus what Andy Ruiz commented on or didn't comment on, okay, and he wanted a, or Malik Scott didn't think that he was worth a 50-50 fight. Okay, um, he felt that, um, you know, Andy was trying to price himself out, uh, the 70, 30, uh, I've seen some videos about Andy wanting 70, 30, you know, um, that's basically false. What was asked was from Andy Ruiz senior that, uh, a 30, 30, 70 split, you know, that's what uh, Team Wilder was asking for, a 70-30 split. So it was still a split, but it was a 70-30 split. Now, something very, very familiar about 70-30, isn't it? Mm. Think about it. Who demanded 70-30 against Alexander Usyk, the unified heavyweight champion of the world? Tyson Fury. Now, it seems that Team Wilder wants 70 percent to andy ruiz andy ruiz's 30 percent mm, see that's what's happening it seems to me that tyson fury and Alexander usik have set a trend on lowballing see andy ruiz they don't want him to price himself out which is a reasonable request don't price yourself out because we won't get what we want to get is the fight happening but it's another thing to this it's another element to this don't try to make a low ball offer a standard okay and call it what it is like i'm deontay wilder you're andy ruiz um we should give you 30 percent, and we take 70 because i we are the star people and this is what you deserve okay and i think that's due to egotistical uh, demands. Why do I say that? Because I think, if anything, just send that man an offer, not a percentage. And I think that's when and why the AJ in Wilder negotiations fell through is because they like the idea of saying some type of split, like what do you get versus what do I get? But I think if they're still dealing with Bob Arum and Premier Boxing Champions, that's how it's going to go over there anyway. So, um, I think because Tyson Fury sent Usyk that low ball offer, they thought that, hey, that's the right idea. And that's what we should offer our fighter instead of just approaching it like, let's offer our fighter a flat rate and a guarantee on this is how much you're going to get that night. OK, so that's a lot to really deal with and really take in now. Um, now, Andy Ruiz saying that. Uh, we he still hasn't came forth and told us what he really wanted. I don't like that that side of the negotiations because we really don't know. Um, but Andy Ruiz um, is going to be overlooked because, as you heard Malik Scott say, listen, okay, we have other opportunities. There are other people on the roster. 
You know, so that's why they're saying they're urgent about saying time's up because they already know they got somebody else in play and they got their lawyers in play and the and, and their team in play to get somebody else on board to take that challenge. But I'm going to leave you guys with this. None of this would be a problem, okay, if it wasn't for the chicken shit spineless backbone of Mauricio Suleiman. What do I mean? Mauricio Suleiman is supposed to regulate what goes where. Okay, this is supposed to be a mandatory eliminator fight. And what's happening? Wilder's negotiating negotiating with 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 Ruiz and Ruiz and his father's negotiating back with the team of Wilder. So at any point, where have we heard Mauricio Suleiman say, hey, this these guys were mandated to fight based on the opportunity to fight the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson Fury. Where has that been said? That's what I'm talking about with Mauricio Suleiman. Mauricio Suleiman can solve all this. Like, fine, you two can't get it together. Then you two have to go to purse bid or some other process like that to make to ensure what the split's going to be and who's going to get what. And then whoever wins between you two can fight Tyson Fury. That's how it should be. But that's not what's happening. See, Wilder now, Ruiz um, wants more money because we know the stuff he's in. Deontay Wilder's like, you know what? I'm giving you an opportunity, Andy. So don't you blow it while Mauricio's doing nothing. So that doesn't, that, so this eliminator uh, thing is nothing for more than, no more than a title. That's all it is. It doesn't mean anything. Then it just shows you that Mauricio Suleiman with the WBC shouldn't be trusted and they really shouldn't be respected because they could have, they could make this uh, negotiation ride a little smoother based on a standard that they supposed to made and they did not. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think of Malik Scott stating that they don't, he didn't state that they wanted 70, 30, but He's not worth 50-50. Of course, please subscribe and you guys been counterpunch. Peace.